What's going on, folks? Welcome back. As always, thank you for tuning in. A uh, little different episode for you all today. Somebody asked for a catch and cook. I did make it out today, somewhat slow day fishing. I got two skippers. We'll roll that footage. Uh, then I'm going to teach you all how I clean the steelhead, and then we'll bring it in the kitchen, and I'll give you a rundown on a recipe for you all. If you all don't care about the catch and cook and how to clean it, uh, we will leave the time somewhere over in here for where you need to go. There's a fish. Ain't a big fish. That was a Yes, sir. Skipper. Most definitely ain't a big fish, but that was pretty quick, so I ain't gonna complain. Fish. Skipper. Y'all actually wanted a catch and cook, so I'm gonna keep this thing. Well, again, that ain't a big fish at all. Um, Y'all actually wanted a catch and cook, though. Well, that's a good little eater, so I am gonna take him home. And I'm absolutely freezing, but <laughs> y'all stick around. So to start cleaning this thing, I just pick a side and I come at the very edge of the cheekbone here. Skinner, you tell me when the folks can see it. Yeah, cool. And I make a diagonal cut. Knife's a little dull there. Uh, about as deep as to the edge of this uh, dorsal fin there. And then I'm only putting my knife in there a little ways. As you can see, there's only about that much of the knife going in there to start. Then I just ride it down the back there, inside that dorsal fin. And there is multiple ways to do this. I'm just showing you the way I do it. So you got this gap right here that you just opened up. So now I'm gonna use my thumb and I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure to slowly pull that meat up. Then I'm gonna use my knife, add a slight little bend to it and then just feel them bones. And then I'm gonna ride them and slowly pull that flay back. Went in a little too far there. So if you go too far, I and mean, that's just part of the rib cage there, cut that whole fillet off and go ahead and trim her up. Ain't my best work, but it'll do. All right, folks, so we made it into the kitchen here. I got the sink water running uh, as cold as it'll possibly get. Just gonna go ahead and rinse these flays off on the meat side. It's extremely important, actually, um, 
that if you're gonna keep a fish to take home, bleed it out really well. Uh, just cut it skills or pop skills with your fingers on each side, and then I always turn them upside down to kind of rub my hands along the meat, and if it's a female, or on, along the rows as well. Getting as much of the slime and whatnot off as I can on this side, on the skin side there. Good enough. Also, try not to freeze my steelhead. Usually if I keep one, I'll uh, I try to cook them within a day or two so I don't gotta freeze them. I think they taste way better that way. And... All right, folks, we're gonna let that sit for a second. So we're doing a full meal for the folks today, buddy. All right, folks, so I'm about to start cutting up some veggies here. In the meantime, I'm going to put a pretty decent amount of olive oil in the pan. I'm going to get that heating up. Try to leave, you know, like all the ass trash under my stove out of there if you can. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so one of the things that I started eating with my steelhead that's actually pretty darn good. Got some... Yellow onions, I believe they are. I'm gonna cut them up into little pieces. This here is zucchini squash. I cut both the end caps off of it. Quarter it. Hunk that up into little bits as well. That's gonna take longer to cook than my fish. So I'm gonna get it started. So, our zucchini and our onion mix is getting about there. Uh, the fish is only gonna take, but especially a filet this small, uh, it's only gonna take about a couple minutes to cook. Obviously, the thicker your filet, the longer you're gonna need. And I'm only gonna give this a, a slight dusting. Hopefully. Just a little bit of garlic, a little bit of cracked salt, and then some sort of lemon and pepper mix. I actually love this stuff. I kind of take it and I'll push it in there a little ways just to make sure that the seasoning sticks as it hits the pan. I'm gonna come back here to the onions and zucchini. Also gonna give them a little garlic and a little bit of pepper in that salt. i show you all more stuff you can put in there, but to be perfectly honest, I'm uh, <laughs> running a little thin in my pantry. So that's about done. I got this oil real hot over here. Uh, my plan is to kind of blacken this. So a big mistake that I used to make 
Because I used to overcook these things. I used to wait for all the color to get out of them. But I could be wrong about this. I ain't telling you to try it. I would guess you could probably eat these things about damn near raw. So leave some color in there. Don't dry them out. I'm also going to let y'all in on a secret here. Uh, I do actually boil my rice sometimes, but given the circumstances, this thing will save just about any meal that you got. I always leave this in my pantry. That's uh, Uncle Ben's ready rice. We got uh, the long grain and wild with herbs and seasoning. And that right there is, uh, if you're looking for some instant rice, that's the good stuff. And no, I ain't even got a sponsorship or nothing. I just love it. 90 seconds and it's going to be done. All right, folks, so Skinner brought up a great point. He said, tell the folks how long it was on there. Uh, truthfully, I don't know. It wasn't more than a minute or two. Uh, probably more like three minutes. But the point being, I really can't tell you how long to cook your fish for because there are a couple things that matter. The most important being the, the thickness of your fillet. Uh, like I said, leave some color in there. Steelhead meat, especially this time of year, it's pretty orange. Uh, leave some color in there, touch it in the middle, make sure it's hot, don't literally eat it raw. Uh, but I do think it would be pretty hard to make yourself sick off of this stuff. I'm gonna show the folks that I eat my vegetables too. Yeah. There we go folks. There is my supper and as you can see I did just leave the skin right on there. That's pretty damn tasty. Now you'll also find in your fillets, show them this one here, buddy. There's gonna be a row of bones up all along the top piece. You can pull them out before you, you cook them. I normally just eat around them, but there's one for you as an example. Uh, so just be careful eating through here. There's actually two rows of bones. The other one's so small, you don't hardly notice them. Hey Skinner, tell them what you think, buddy. Yeah, boy, I can tie one back. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty damn good. Awful tough food to eat, you know, being everything, it's, you know, steaming hot and such, and like that for it, but here you go. <laughs> no, yeah, boy, the mushroom, good veggies. The, the whole combination of these three things is a super earthy meal. That right there is how you eat your eyes, boys. Outro. All right, guys, that is a wrap on today's episode. Uh, haven't done a catch and cook in a while. It's kind of something we got away from, but one of y'all is asking for one. If this is something you enjoyed, let us know down below in the comments, or if there's something you want to see us cook, uh, even if it's something outrageous or crazy like a muskrat or a raccoon or something, uh, y'all let us know. Uh, I do enjoy cooking. It would be a good way for me to get back in the kitchen. So appreciate y'all sticking around. Well guys, like I said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. If you haven't watched some of our last bobber downs and videos we've posted, go check them out. We got some more bobber downs coming your way. Uh, I got some brown trout fishing from Utah coming your way. I'm pretty pumped about that. Appreciate y'all watching. Stay tuned and I will see you on the next video.